There is no more, no less, peace of mind in the simple life of the barnyard than there is in the routine of the office. From Maxine Comen in the Deep Country Essays, 1987. The poet Maxine Kuhlman was born on June 6th of 1925 in Philadelphia. She lived a long 89 years, always contributing with her literature. Kumi had three children and a husband. She favors traditional poems that are more dark and meaningful, where the, that was due to many losses of friends. Kuhlman stopped writing poems for almost seven years as she took in mind what her instructor from Radcliffe College told her. His comment couldn't have been more withering. Say it with flowers, he wrote, but for God's sake, don't try to write poems. Raised in Philadelphia, Maxine Kumi, daughter of Jewish parents, attended Swakara Institute. She received her bachelor's in 1940 and her master's in 1948 at Radcliffe College. She studied poetry with John Holmes on the Boston Center for Adult Education. Kumi also taught English at Tufts University from 1958 to 1961 and from 1965 to 1968. She was a scholar at Radcliffe Institute for Independent Studies from 1961 to 1963. She's also held appointments as a business lecturer and poet at many American colleges and universities. I'm Dr. Escajadir, and with me today I have the famous poet, Miss Maxine Kuhlman. How are you, Maxine? I'm fine, thank you for us. So, let's get straight to it. What are your teachings like? Like, what exercises do you give to your students? Well, I'm pretty hard on them, but I think that the best exercise I give them is to ask them to memorize the poem of at least 14 lines. Then I ask them to recite it to the class in the following year. Uh, because I believe that putting poems into your memory bank is better than putting dollars. That sounds reasonable. So you and Anne Sexton have grown as poets. What did you learn from her? Or what would you teach her if you could? Well, so much has been written about Sexton and my relationship that I hesitate before even adding more to it. We learned from each other as we grew as poets. Coming of age in women's movement gradually gaining a toehold in what it was then. So, in like the 50s and much of the 60s? Exactly. Uh, and back then it was a, a male-dominated film. Oh, thank you, Maxine, for coming here. Thank you. After Love by Maxine Kuhlman is one of her most recognized poems. It talks about how she felt during that one rough year in her life. She claims that she hated everything about her. Her body, her mind, her bare self. Human did things that were destructive, but at the same time, healing. At the end of the poem, the phrase, except there was a moment when the wolf, the mongering wolf, who stands outside the self laid lightly down and slept, emphasizes that she discovered that self-love is healing. Maxine Kuhlman wrote this poem since she lost many of her friends who showed her affection. She thought she wasn't loved anymore and stopped loving herself. But later on, as she gained experience, she wrote this poem to convey that understood that she needed to love herself. This is a little one called After Love. Afterward, the compromise, bodies resume their boundaries. These legs, for instance, mine. Your arms take you back in. Spoons of our fingers, lips admit their ownership. The bedding yawns, a door blows aimlessly ajar. And overhead, a plane sing-songs coming down. Nothing has changed except there was a moment when the wolf, the mongering wolf who stands outside the self, lay lightly down and slept.